Hello, everybody. Welcome. Ah, why were you looking up the Lady in the Tramp soundtrack, soundtrack, VJ? That is a great question. And to that ans and to that question, I have an answer. Um, somebody told me that I needed better rewards for channel points. And so you know what I did? I added two new rewards. One <laughs> is I will talk in an NPC or player voice for 10 minutes. And you should be able to spend channel points on it. You should be able to pull it up. The second one is I will sing a song from a playlist that I made. Um, <laughs> it's got to be some. I was looking it up because I really I know a, I know there's one Lady in the Tramp two song that I know really well. I was like, oh, let me put this on the playlist. Mm, can find it. Uh, so yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. 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 Ben redeemed it first. So. Do I need to make the prices higher? I, maybe I will. I don't know. <laughs> okay, but Ben redeemed it first. So, Ben, let me... Uh... Okay, did it not give you a little... I put a, I put a link in there. A few hundred. All right, all right. I'll fix it later. Y'all, don't go, don't go abusing this <laughs> while I have it this low, all right? All right, relax. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Uh, okay, did the link show up for you guys though? Because I put a, I put a thing in there. Ben, I'm fi I'm finding it. Hold on, did did the link show up in there for y'all? Because I put a thing in there so that y'all could see what the options were for me to speak like, right? Um. Mmm. Okay, okay. Um, I think there is a limit on the singing one. I don't think there's a limit on the voice one, but I will get that fixed. Okay, but Ben, when you were redeeming, when you're looking at this, do you get a link to a spreadsheet that gives you options? Mmm, okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I should make it a command. Okay, mm, okay, okay. Thank you, appreciate y'all. Okay, so Ben, you redeem this first. So the first important question here is, who do you want me to sound like, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, let me do that. Ben, who do you want me to sound like? You've got Sutak, you've got Captain... Motherfucker, you don't trust me? Anyway, Ben, who do you want me to sound like? Sutak, Captain Dio Occulti, Ridley the Raccoon, Zaraxis or Dr. Talasha Sagefall? You got, let me drop this link in here since you want to be fucking weird about it. Or do you want to roll a D, do you want to roll a D6, are you rolling a six and tell me who I'm sounding like? Um, okay, so hold on a second. While I'm here, while I'm waiting for Ben to give me an answer, let me, uh, oh wait, I shouldn't show y'all this. <laughs> let me swap this out. Thank you for being here with these growing pains. Six, Dr. Talasha Sagefall. Okay, all right, we're gonna go with that. We're gonna go with that, give me a sec. Ooh, what does my girl sound like? Well, I appreciate y'all being here for my aches and pains. Um, my name is Dr. Uh, Talasha Sagefall, and I am a professor at one of the most esteemed universities in uh, Redacted for the time being. But uh, pleasure to make your acquaintance and happy to be here. And yes, let me fix that spreadsheet real quick. Mm, let me pull that up and then we're gonna dive into it. I'm gonna be talking like this for the next 10 minutes and I do have a timer going on. <laughs> Nice to meet all of you. Um, some of you are going to hear this voice more often coming soon. <laughs> no, you redeemed it. So this is what you get for 10 minutes. <laughs> I feel like Homegirl from uh, Monsters, Inc. You know, the slug lady? I can't remember her name. <laughs> yes, this is an online lecture about game design. Mm, 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 mm. But yes, one second. Let me... Uh, 
Ah, you know what else I realized? One second, my captioner has stopped working like the little jackass it is. Ah. Captioning, are you working again? Are you working again? Yes. Hello. Please start working. All right, we're going to refresh this. <laughs> would you feel this voice would be very grating if you had to listen to it for four, eight, twelve hours, potentially? Twelve hours? <laughs> but while we're waiting, nope, nope, we're not doing anything while we're waiting for the captioning to start. Here we go. Hi. Welcome, it's working again. So we've got eight minutes and 20 seconds left on this. And then there's a song that we're going to do. Rouse, I hope you can see that. You can see the, uh, I'd worry about my throat to be honest. You know what, that's an excellent point, but I'm, you know, I'm not really doing much here actually, which is kind of funny. You would think I'd be doing a lot, but it's, I, well actually, maybe I am doing a lot. Would not want this character as a teacher. Too fucking bad. Who knows where this character's gonna show up. And an unannounced thing in any of your sessions, we'll fucking see. <laughs> but while this is going, Rouse, I hope you've picked a song, unless you will let me choose the song that I'm going to be singing next. Um, but <clears throat> while, we're, while we've got the time for things, let us go over everything, right? Thank you, everybody, for being back here. So... We, in my opinion, have got a really solid base with all of this. We figured out what happens when you have a, uh, when your hunger and your anger go to zero and what happens when it goes to uh, max. We did get rid of the plague ridden vampires for obvious reasons. Thank you again so much, Ben, for, um, thank you for letting me pick for, thank you, Ben, for pointing out the reasons why we shouldn't have the plague ridden vampire along with vampires. Appreciate you so much. Um, the next thing I think we need to work on is what what happens when you're a rogue? What happens when you go into a rogue on either end, right? Because there are there are 14 days left in this game jam, and I still have to do layout for this. And listen, I'm will I can put in late hours to get this working, but I definitely need to get the mechanics down. So that's what we're gonna work on. Um, we are going to let's see, uh, la 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 la. Where are we ending? Part two, hunt it. Um. Okay, so there was a suggestion. I think Callum picked this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Little random. What if the second part, there was an option for the player to choose to either st st strictly go into hiding while becoming more and more blood hungry or go into hiding by trying to become another agent with a new name and background in a new region. So they'd be struggling to hide their intense bloodlust. Maybe bodies go missing and they have to come up with extravagant explanations. I... What if you sing as this character? Absolutely not. Ab uh, well, you know what? <clears throat> oh, I love it and I hate it at the same time. I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I do not like it one bit. Um, but let us but let us discuss what happens when you become a rogue on either end, right? So the thing that we know here is that your different like vampire types they don't actually give you powers, right? Because that's not how the game works. It's just, it just flavors. Thank you. See, Caroline agrees with me. No singing like this. It just flavors the way in which you, um, in which you attack things, right? Because there's not really powers like that. It's just like, oh, narrative. And you, it gives you things to like talk about and discuss, right? So, uh, I think, ah, man, we don't know what the fourth vampire is. We should fuck one, two, three, four. Okay, what we're gonna, actually the first thing I think we need to do, the first thing we need to do is figure out exactly what vampire is the fourth one that we have. Um, and because right now we have corpse drinker on one end, regular on one end when the anger happens, beast jewel on the other, and then we need the fourth one. The fourth homie, what is the fourth homie? Do you, what do you think the fourth homie should be friends? 
<sighs> so we've got um, one that drinks blood and eats bodies. We've got a, just a regular degular were vampire, not werewolf. Ah, I got I have werewolf on the brain. I think I might need to make a werewolf game next in conjunction with a dear, dear friend of mine who is all about werewolves. Um, and then we also have bestial. Now the question here is what is the opposite? So when you have the regular vampire, oh wait, y'all can't see this, apologies. <clears throat> So when you have the regular vampire on anger, when your anger is low, on the max, you have the bestial vampire. So on the low, when your hunger is, is when your hunger is like bottomed out, you're a corpse drinker. You will drink blood and you will eat the bodies as well. What is the max? Like, like if, if bestial is the end of anger, what is the end of hunger? Like you're fully fed up, like you're bloated. Mm, the first thing that came to mind is maybe some type of bloating vampire, but I don't know what that would do exactly. Like what would be the, ooh, okay. What if, oh, mm, no, no. I was gonna say, wouldn't it be cool if there was a vampire out there that could just open its body like an Iron Maiden and just engulf you in it kind of thing? But I feel like that might be something a corpse drinker could do. Um, what are we going for this end of the vampire, right? Mm. Yeah, vultures feel more like corpse, drinker, corpse drinkers as well. What are we thinking here? What are we thinking? Ah, la, 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 la. If you're full like this, you're kind you're getting into kind of gluttonous territory, I feel like. Cause like the corpse drinker, it feels like it's very much giving into you've been starving and so you'll eat anything. You're glut like you're kind of getting into gluttonous territory. Maybe, maybe. I was thinking that too. They could be very picky with what they drink. And mm, but how, what, how does that play? How does being a picky eater? play out in the way that you kill people right because for the corpse drinker when you kill when they kill they like rip out flesh they devour oh hey what if Hannibal vamps what if <laughs> the way you're killing people <laughs> who did I have this conversation with I was talking with somebody about this um man I can't remember if this was over chat or like with somebody but the liver is just all of this blood right in it that's how the blood that's how the that's how it functions and so if vampires in this world can only drink blood and blood like substances then or anything that's so suffused with blood it would make sense that they would enjoy liver because blood blood right i think it's the liver it's the liver right it's not the kidney it's it's one of those organs so what if the way that this individual kills what mm, Oh, you know, you know what this person does? Very organized and refined in what they do. And I think they do kind of go in a kind of Hannibal Lecter style way. Like they go and they like they're 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 ooh. So being filled up definitely gives them strength, but because they're used to having what they want, they have this refined thing. Yes. And like when you the the way you know an art the art we're gonna call it an artisan. We're just gonna I think we're just gonna call it an artisan. I like that and I think that'll work. But the way you know you have an artisan is when you find you start finding bodies that are only missing like an organ or two right and it's been so and it's not like it's missing chunks of flesh organs specifically it's been sewn the body's been sewn back up it's been placed out for it to find the blood's been drained yes here is our artisan mm. oh you know what it is you know what it probably is because they're such picky eaters and they're and they're very delicate about this um they probably resort to very like uh, kidnapping tactics like chloroform or something like that you know they're out here snatching people in the most violentless way possible as not to ruin the flavoring they do they I think I think you'll find artisans that are convinced that it's like yes the flavor the fear ruins the flavor or somewhere like the fear accentuates the flavor like it, it just depends but it's not it doesn't it's not it if you get into an actual fight with them they will have they will be like stronger Mmm, stalking their, pr ooh, yes. Yes, yes, I like this, I like this. I like this a lot. Oh, it's time. Woo. Okay, super happy to not be doing that voice anymore. Mm. 
maybe an organ trade. Um, we're gonna give it a couple minutes in between me doing this and the singing. <laughs> artisan. Ooh, wait a second. Yes. Wait, here's here's what it is. Because the 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 plague the the plague touched had an aura around them that just caused kind of sickness. What if they can kind of exude um they can they can exude like some type of pheromone that either calms their victim or causes them to go into intense fear. And then or any spectrum of things and that way people who are like, "Well, I think they taste better when they're calmer." Well, I think they taste better when they're full of fear. They can like just do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you thought we were going to be stuck like this forever? Don't worry. You're going to, re well, I don't know. Maybe Rouse. Maybe you'll hear this voice again. He'll, he'll see. Maybe this is the voice. Oh, mm-hmm. Um, yes, Rouse, I want you to consider, what if this is the voice of the Dark Queen? Are you still going to love her then? Okay, um, I'm back out of it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Good for peacefully getting their prey. Yes, this is perfect. The artisan. Ah, I love this. Okay, um. <laughs> what if I was a monster, Rouse? What if I was a monster and made our our lady our home our homie our good time friend sound like that? Um, okay. Hold on. Where are these where are these notes at actually? Let's go back over here. You know what? We'll pull notes here. <laughs> IDK who she is, but I could change her, I swear. Oh, could you change her? Could you though? Okay, so I just just while I'm while I'm like taking grabbing these suggestions from y'all because these are really good um, The Dark Queen is my version of Strahd for my homebrew world um, Her name is Katella Ivanovich and I'm um, and <laughs> She wasn't always like this right she was married to the she was a queen consort to the actual queen of the of the place that they were from but uh, she got sick and uh, not the queen concert got sick. And so the queen did everything she could to bring her back and then eventually turned her into a vampire, um, which the dark queen killed her, the queen um, when she awoken because she had to feed and she's been trying to get her love back or get, get her love a new body and, and get her soul, everything back ever since and has like broken a bunch of planets and is just ruling over a dead space spell jammer kind of domain right now. Yes, make her worse. That's what I was thinking. Um, or actually, here's a better question. You you know, such such bravado, such, such assumption that you're going to make her worse and she's not just going to make you worse. Um, yes. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Yes, very organized and refined. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, we're gonna trade. This is very good. Mm. <laughs> you don't have morals. Listen, Caroline, if you ever want to join under her dark gates, especially the game with Te with Rouse in it with Teddy. Listen, the two of you can be the dynamic duo and just lavish my 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 girl the way she deserves. Um, but okay, so we have we have our corpse drinker, right? We have all the vampires that we need, which I'm super excited about. Now to get to the second part of the game, right? So we got to think about what ha like. So the questions to ask ourselves now. Now that we're here, right, is. Mm. 
the questions to ask ourselves now that we're here is um <laughs> ah! um god what am i what am i yes on topic the questions to ask ourselves now is does the hunger and anger operate the same way or are you always stuck are you like I'm wondering if the second half of the game shouldn't have hunger or anger or anything. Like in keeping with the hopelessness and whatnot, it's like the way you, the 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 way you turned rogue, you're kind of just stuck that way unless you get lucky and someone, you know, gets you to blood rehab or something. Um and really it's just it's and this part of the game is really just about like trying to be a step ahead of whoever's hunting you at this point. So if we, if we switch the game completely, right? It's like, hey, part one, you have these hunger bars, you have this, and here's what happens when this ends. And then part two, oh, you became a rogue because you had no anger. All right. You are, you never, your anger doesn't go up. Um, I don't think, here's the thing though. Hmm. <sighs> I, yeah, I think losing yourself into whatever it is is a good idea. I don't think there, I, I don't think there's going to be penalties though, because in the first part of the game, you get, there's not going to be penalties or bonuses, right? You get, you get penalties and bonuses depending on what end of the spectrum you're on. But since you're just kind of, unless, well, I mean, okay, y'all, y'all tell me your opinion on this. So we know that if you like, as you get further and further into like your hunger and stuff. So for example, um, if you're in the third bar of, uh, of anger, you have minus three to card stacks, right? So if it takes five card stacks to do it, you, it takes eight instead to like attack a thing. Um, like, and you'd be stuck in that the entire game because that's how you ended it. Does that feel like, eh? And then on the flip side, if you got into this because you are hungry, you get, you get a uh, plus three, plus four, plus five. I can't count. Um, like your, like your last thing would be, you get, you get a, you get a plus five essentially, right? Or maybe it's random. I don't know. But one way or the other. Ooh, here's an idea. So the system uses 2d6, right? Hi Vidar, welcome. Um, so I am, there is a game, there's an itch game jam going on called uh, Guided by Firelights. And I'm making my first solo RPG and it's called Hunt. Actually, hold on a second. Let me show you the cover. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's called Hunt. It's a game where you are, um, where you are a vampire who hunts rogue vampires for a government agency. And the point of the game is to, and like you're, while you're doing this hunting, you are so, oh, hey Callum. Oh, hey, EB Tech, welcome, welcome. Um, hey, I'm so glad y'all are here. Um, but yeah, we're working on my first solo RPG for this game jam, which it ends in like two weeks. Um, and it's called Hunt, Vampires You're Hunting. You are a, an agent for the Magical Entities and Occurrences um, Bureau for the United States, and you are hunting rogue vampires. And through the course of this, the the only way the game, the game ends in one of two ways, either you become a rogue or you become apathetic to, like one, you become a rogue, two, you die, three, you become apathetic and you deal with depression from your job for decades. <laughs> Right, and it's it's also partially a journaling game. And so right now we're working on the mechanics. The first part of the game, the first part of the game is you're this vampire agent who's hunting other rogue agents. And through the course of it, you will like, it's gonna end one way or the other, right? There's a very small window. Um, Well, you do eat other vampires to help nourish yourself because the government will only give you so much human blood. So yes, technically. Um, but it's more like these rogue vampires have been getting into dangerous shit, like dropping bodies all over the place. And you are going in and hunting them down for the government, um, for, and whatnot. Um, and, and like the setting of the world is vampires 
all those monsters and stuff, all the fairy tales, they're out, they exist, the world knows about it. And so vampires are the primary agents in this agency. And we figured out the most of the mechanics, pretty much all, uh, I actually I'd say we figured out all of the mechanics for the first part of this. Like there's some like, not fluff, I mean, fluff, I guess. It's it's partly a journaling game that I need to work on, but I'm really focusing on like getting the mechanics ham hammered out. And so we're working on the second part of the game is when you turn into a rogue and what that looks like for you, right? Because in the first part of the game, you got two bars, you got hunger and anger. And if your anger drops to zero, you lose the game. And the one or two options is you become a rogue or you're apathetic and you fall into a deep depression for 2d6 decades. Um, and then if you, if your anger like is maxed out all the way, you become a rogue <laughs> with like severe anger issues. <laughs> and then, on the flip side, if your hunger bottoms out, you either die or you become a rogue, right? And if your hunger maxes out, you become a rogue. And you get bonuses and um, you get Bane's bonuses and negatives, depending on what end. So like if you get to the end of anger and um, hunger, you're getting um, penalties for that. And if you get to the end, the like top point of uh, anger and hunger, so you're maxed out, you're getting bonuses for that. And we're just trying to figure out what, what that means for when you come into this game when you come into the second part of the game. Um, but it actually is a really good point. It would not make sense to have a way that is better than another way. No, that is a really great point. Like it makes it, it makes narrative sense in the first part of the game, but the second part, not so much. So I think pretty much, so, okay. Wait a second, okay. Um, I'm gonna move this suggestion because it's bothering me that it's here. Mm. Good comparison. Um, and like, oh, to add, there's only one, there's only one happy ending for real, for real. Um, and no, 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 it's not a D20 system. It's a 2D6 system and a deck of cards. It's, uh, it's based off of, here we go. Uh, Y'all can't see, hold on. It's based off of the Firelight system, which uses TD6, um, 2D6 and a deck of cards. This particular game can use two decks of cards if you wanna get wild about it, but um, yeah, only if you wanna get wild about it. What is happening here? Hold on, y'all. Yeah, there we go. Um, but yeah, so, covers, nope, document, here we go. So. Ooh, I think, okay, so how you, uh, how you became a rogue is only for flavor. No more extra points at this point from being a rogue, but okay. What if you could get bonuses and stuff to things based on events that happen to you, right? Because what's happening here, the, the, the bulk of this game now at this point is you going from place to place <laughs> and eating people and journaling about how that makes you feel, right? And so I think, okay. I think what's gonna have to happen here is, Yeah, yeah, being a rogue is an, like being, well, technically no, because uh, it, okay, you you definitely, you 100% become a rogue if you max out your hunger or your, um, or your anger. I, Callum, I'm so happy for you to be here in whatever capacity. I appreciate your cool ideas, but also super happy to have you just chilling in here with me as well. Um, and becoming a rogue is not inevitable, right? Like I said, if you max out anger and hunger, you become a rogue, period. If you deplete anger and hunger, your options are die. <laughs> like you can just choose to die um, or fall into a deep depression for 2d6 decades. So no, you don't, not inherently. Yeah. Yeah, it is built around that. But uh, it's 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 really just like the first part of the game is a war of attrition. At some point, you're gonna, it's gonna end. Like you, uh, you, you got that small window to stay in and then you get in and out of it and it gets fucking wild, right? Um, but okay, 
Okay, how you become a rogue is, I can't spell. How you become a rogue is only for flavor. No more, no more extra points at this point from being a rogue. Um, let's see. Potentially can get benefits from card events. So, Vidar, funny you say that. You could do something where there's like a table of flavor ways you turn into a rogue, each different ways. So we do have, so just, just to get you caught up, there are four types of vampires in this world, right? You got the corpse drinker, which is someone who, um, is there a reward for lasting more days? I mean, not really. Huh. Maybe there should be, um, but but Vidar. So you've got uh, so we got the corpse drinker, which is a vampire that eats that drinks human blood and eats the flesh. Um, you've got a regular vampire, you know, just bite into you, shrink that kind of thing. You've got the bestial vampire, which takes on like more of a like werewolf like form. And then you have the artisan vampire, which in many ways can easily be mistaken for a regular vampire. Um, but each of them do have different abilities, right? The corpse drinker has, uh, da, 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 da. let's see, the corpse drinker has a pounce ability that brings you to the ground and makes these to drink your blood and rip out pieces of flesh with their teeth. The artisan has an aura that ex exudes a pheromone that allows them to either incite calmness or fear in their in their um victims who they then later kidnap drain of the blood take some of their organs to infuse in blood and eat um the bestial has powerful jaws they use to rip individuals apart and the regular uses their claws and teeth to shred you to bits kind of thing and so the idea here is depending on how you become a rogue on which end of things so if you're if your hunger goes to the black so zero you become a corpse drinker um but the way this game works you don't actually get like um that stuff is more flavor it's just like for you know narrative stuff and for the, an individual to be able to journal about what they're getting into you know like having like some ideas it was like yeah i i my pheromones released and i took a blah 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 you know um this type firelights doesn't really do like a lot of different abilities um but i do think so okay potentially can get benefits from card events um let's swap back over to this it would be cool it would be cool if there was a reward just because it could make it a it, it like a difference between normal and hard mode, which helps with replayability or something. I, you know what that is? That would be cool. It would be cool if they're, I like that actually. Um, EB Tech, could one be redeemed from being a rogue? Um, yes. So the happy ending of this is going to blood rehab because in previous things I have said, I kind of liken, um, hmm, the longer you last, the more government benefits maybe you do work for the government starting off um i kind of i've likened vampirism and drinking blood to like an alcohol or drug addiction right it's alluring um and, and like falling into being a rogue um like so let's say eb tech you are playing this game and you have become a rogue and you decided i'm gonna play the part two of this game because you can always end at part one that's the end of your story um if you play part two and you and if you when you get caught right because at some point it's a it's it's secular right um like eventually you become a rogue or you stop doing the job because you died or you burnt out eventually you get caught like you get caught at some point one way or the other Something happens, right? Um, and there's an option here. If one, if you get caught by an agent, if that a like that agent might know you and be like, we're gonna fake your death and we're gonna get you into rehab. Like this is your life. You are going to rehab, right? And it's a lifelong struggle for that because you're the the thing you're addicted to is the thing you need to drink to live. So it's the ha the the happy redeemable ending is going to blood rehab. Um. The second option of that though is instead of getting caught by an agent, a friend intercedes on your behalf and gets you to rehab. I think, I think, um, I'm unsure at what point and how that comes in, but okay. Le but let's, let's scroll up a second to add the note of, ah, shit. 
Um, all right, y'all. I'm going to say in 14 minutes, I'm going to rouse. I'm going to pick a song since you redeemed those points. Um, <laughs> new people. Uh, there are new, there are new um, stream things. There are new point redemptions. Um, I, I've been told that I need to make it, I need to raise it higher because right now it's what 50 points for a song and 20 points for a voice. Um, but y'all, some of y'all have like over 2,500 points and, and stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to fix that later. D don't go buck wild in my comments, please. Um, but okay. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, reward for going longer days helps with how do you I, I don't even know I don't really know how you get points so that's why <laughs> we have the power i don't know how you get points so that's that's why i like <laughs> i was just like oh yeah you know let me be nice maybe it's hard to get points here you go here's a 20 here's a 20 points and here's 50. how do you get points is it just simply from commenting and stuff watch oh it's watch time hmm Okay, so, mm, you know what, okay. Reward for going longer days, uh, perhaps item, ooh, items from the government. Okay, so here, here's the question though, for the, for the reward stuff, are we thinking? Oh, okay. All right, I'll, yeah, I'll have to readjust this. So here's the question though, right? First question, right? Are we thinking that like the the longer days you go is like a is it's like it's something you get in the game or it's like hey you lasted ten days in this um, if you last fifteen you get this item to use in the next game is it that kind of replayability or it's like oh you lasted ten days here's a new boost um, I I'm I'm assuming the the latter right like we're it, yeah. Hmm. Agent generation table, like you draw, por que no los dos? Agent generation table, like you draw three cards and each card does something different. Like two cards can determine abilities and one could determine relationship to the player, friend, or nemesis. Hmm. I like that idea. I'm just not, I'm wondering if it goes in this first draft of things or when I come back and add a like group option as well to stuff. So uh, regardless, I'm going to, and, and to anybody who hasn't been here while I was doing this, all of you who have helped in this are going to be credited in the uh, comments, in the notes of this game uh, for your wonderful, wonderful help. I, I appreciate y'all joining me and giving me super cool ideas and helping me flesh out my, my little, my little, my love child, my first, my first little baby. My first of many, hopefully. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, por que no los dos? Mm. Why did I say that again? Okay, so, uh, how you become a rogue? Okay, so every time you draw so this part of the game is about not getting caught and getting and, and eating more people, right? Um, I, I, oh, thanks Caroline. Um, yeah, y'all have been great. If I don't, I, man, I've gotten some amazing ideas and my first little solo RPG, I think is gonna be great because of y'all, because of the help. Um, but, okay, so. Here, the, the, the question to ask ourselves now is, when you draw a card, what happens, right? 
because when you draw a card and the point of drawing a card in firelights right Let, let's go over to the game let's go over to the game right um all right so let's make it bigger okay so the game right Exploring the world. When you start the game, draw a card from the story deck and place it face up in front of you. This is where you are right now. As you discover the land, you will add more cards to your world map, each card being a new region. When you add a new region card, uh, the corner of your card needs to connect with another region's corner. To know where the region you are adding is located below, beside, to, or above, compare the numbers in both cards and interpret the results. Um... Like you lasted 10 days before rogue status, here's a boost. You lasted 20 days, start the next game with the get out of jail free card or something. Mm, good. Yeah, that could be good. Um, okay, so igniting the six beacons. The six beacons of Penumbra served as a guide for the dead to navigate through the veil. Even to this day, they continue to emit a subtle mystical smoke. To find beacons, discover a region. If the card you add, if you if if the card you add to the map is a face card that region includes a beacon okay so it's just a, so it's just a regular like deck right in 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 the base game of firelights it's a regular deck and you take out the jacks in this game you keep the two jacks in and they help either reduce or they reduce or raise your anger or hunger bars like it's it's a little help a hail mary kind of situation um um, okay, so I don't, so the, the, this part of the game and just the game in general, because I think, I think we are going to go with like having a, like a thing, mm -hmm, normal 52 card deck. I think the fact that this is something that's happening in the United States, we're just gonna, we're gonna have a map about it in there, like in the back, like, hey, use this as a reference, here's a handout, that kind of thing, da da da, da right? Um, so it, it's not inherently about discovering, well, if there's 52 card, okay, if there's 52 cards in the deck, if there's 50, mm, if there's 52 cards in the deck, and we are four different types of, Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do, right? It could be that. It could be the jack card. It could be the jack card. That could be a good one. Um, uh, you, hold on. You, you lasted X days. Start the game with a jack card. Yep, that Caroline, that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, that's exactly what I was thinking. So we'll break so I don't think there there are not enough agents for them to just have for the agents to just have one region. So they get sent all over the place, right? Um you lasted X day, start the game with a jack card. You you can use when things get dicey. Okay, so, uh, da -da 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 map. Map. US. Hi, Fiend Tales Comics. Appreciate you being here. Just to give you a rundown, we are making, oh, let me change this first. We are making my first solo RPG called Hunts. Um, Mm. Um, we are making my first solo RPG called Hunt. It is about you being a vampire agent for the uh, Department of Magical Entities and Occurrences, and you hunt down rogue vampires. And it's a game of attrition, right? Because at the end of the day, you're either going to die, get burnt out from your job, or turn into a rogue who then has to be hunted by your fellow, um, by your former agents. And the first part of the game is you being an agent. And if you want to continue, the second part of the game is you being a rogue. And right now we're figuring out what happens when you're a rogue and stuff. But let's go back to the document. Also, just to let y'all know, in five minutes, I'm going to have to sing a song because those points were redeemed. Happy to have you here, Fiend. <laughs> um, okay, so map. U.S. broken into four uh, sections. 
Uh, each suit represents one section. When you draw, hmm, hmm. Okay, uh, this is this is a how the cards work section. <laughs> you go rogue and gain hide as a bonus action. How the cards work. Okay, you work each represents when you draw that suit. You're in that region of the world and the value of the card, number, face. Um, when you draw that suit, you're in that region of the world and the value of that card, number, face, determines where exactly you are. Okay, each, okay. Um, I think it's gonna, okay. So I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a specific space in that region. Hold on a second, hold on a fucking second. Give me a minute. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. I meant to say I was live on TikTok too. Man, it's so easy to forget to do this. I really gotta be better about promoting myself everywhere. Um, yep, yep. I was like, I, I was like, why the fuck do I recognize that name? <laughs> it's cause we're mutes. It was like, man, I know that name. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm glad you're here to catch the stream too. Thank you so much for being here. Um, but yeah, okay. So I think I think it's gonna be specific space in that region. Specific space in that region. Ah, <laughs> oh, I like that emoji. Um, it's gonna be a specific space in that region, and that's where we're gonna get this part of the of the um, of the game, right? So hold on. Back on fire lights. Let's move this over. So if we scroll up, you'll see up here. Man, what are you doing? Sir, sir, why aren't you working? Okay, so if you see here, part of the journaling for this game is the, the table for like region, theme, event, story. So it's gonna be a specific space in that region. Oh, it's gonna be a specific space in that region. And then you'll go and look it up. Uh, you'll go and look it up and it'll tell you the like theme event and story, right? I mean, you're you're gonna Oh, ooh. Huh. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. Here, okay. So specific space in that region will uh will give you theme event story. Yep, exactly. Yep, we can break, we can just go grab a map that has that on there already and just dive in. And I think, I think what I'll definitely, I think what I'm definitely gonna be doing because it feels like you would think that if agents get sent somewhere, it might be in the most heavily populated places. Now, of course, I'm gonna have a couple of like the most heavily populated places in there, but it'll also be small, small towns where like something like you're just showing up and things are going wrong and da 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 da. Um, but here's what I think I'm gonna have in there, right? So we have to have a table for rogues. So we're gonna have a, where's the cowboy story, VJ? What are you, at? Rouse, I don't understand what you're asking me. So I can't, I, I elaborate. Um, but, oh, all right, okay. Um, okay, but before I start singing, because somebody redeemed these points, um, so we're gonna have two types of tables, right? That are gonna be a D66, right? The first D66 table is gonna be the rogues and what they, it's gonna be um, cowboy vampire. Oh. <laughs> vampire cowboys, call that Red Dead Redemption. You are so right about that, friend. Um, 
Where is the section where you tell people they fight a vampire cow? In the small, small print at the very back of the book, Callum. Um, but there's gonna be two tables, right? There's gonna be two tables and we are, the first table is gonna be for the first part of it, which is gonna be another D66. It's gonna have the rogue information and who they attacked. And, um, and then you're gonna, like, that's who you're hunting, right? Like when you get into an area, you roll the D66 to figure out who you're, who you're looking for, right? Um, and then after that, after you fight, you go about and journal about it. Um, and then, yeah. And then the second part of the, the second D66 table is going to be the vamp cow is the DLC. Mm, don't put that on me. Um, the second part is going to be your victims that you might go and attack. Ooh, yeah. And okay, y'all, uh, we are still going to be doing this, but I am going to be singing while we're working for a little bit. So, uh, let me go pick a song real quick. Um, okay, so we know, let me grab the table or let me, let me grab the song. Our lovely Rouse redeemed this and said that I got to pick the music. So I'm super excited about that. Let's see, let's see. What am I feeling? Hmm. Ooh, you know what? I know what I'm feeling. I'd be a vampire who only kills rich, evil people. You know what? That is that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Here we go. I do, in fact, have a song, y'all. All right. Well, I broke your heart very literally. His voice haunts me more than it should be. Actually, hold on. Let me turn this down a little bit my head and shake i never thought it could kill me oh please slay one more day oh will away i want you you don't want me my mistake for wasting yours and mine i want you but will you stay with me today with me today no making fun of my singing all right i will cry about it Something will think you bad, but well, the way you smile turns the heavens above, heavens above me. Go, I want you all the time. Gotta prove you can trust me. Well, please say one more day. What learn always? I want you. You don't want me. My mistake for wasting yours and mine. I want you. But will you stay with me today? With me today? I need you. You don't need me. You are no. I am not okay. I want you. But will you stay with me today? With me today? With me today? With me today? <laughs> My dog has come to check on me. But please stay one more day or loot away. I want you, you don't want me, my mistake for wasting yours and mine. I want you, for will you stay with me today, with me today? I want you, you don't need me, you are no, I am not okay. I want you. But will you stay with me today, with me today, with me today, with me today? <laughs> and that is with me tonight uh, by the used. I love them. Oh no, I'm listening to the song. <laughs> I am listening to the song. Uh, I love them, but uh, I definitely gotta listen to the song. Thanks for redeeming those points. <clears throat> Ooh. 
Okay, rogues that <laughs> rogues that you will be hunting. Ah, hold on a second, y'all. It's hell in my apartment right now. Shit. Yes, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks for not being mean in the comments. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and listen to this and we're gonna see. <laughs> um, okay, so the rogues that you will be hunting and who and who they attacked. Uh, who your victims are and where you found them. I simply know that was better than the real singer. Wow, thank you so much, Riles. Um, you are so, Riles, you are so making up for being on the wrong side of that war, just to let you know. Um, you're almost in the green. I don't know where you found them. Um, okay, so two tables. Okay, so when you draw the card, it's gonna determine what region you're in. Yes, I do. Fuck yeah, I do. I'm much better when I have visual things in front of me. Okay, so I have a set of cards. They look kind of gay. Like, colorful. Like, rainbow. I've got <laughs> pride, colorful guards. I, did I buy these specifically for this? I think I did. Yep, yes, I did. I was on your side. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I bought these very colorful cards specifically because I was like, this is gay. I love it. Mm. Also, anybody that's new and listening to this on, on the stream, I am a queer, I am a bisexual trans guy. I am saying that as a gay myself. Um, but anyway, so I do have cards, right? So we've got the we've got the four suites, the four suits. Why did I say suites? We've got the four suits, which are going to determine um, what is... Fruity cards, exactly. So we draw this and the clubs, nope, the fuck me. What is this word? Uh, the spades, yep. The spade is gonna tell us the region. And then the three is gonna, ooh, yeah, we'll have, ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it, go, it goes one to 11. Oh, wait, no, it goes one to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it goes one to 14, right? Having uh, jacks be, uh, you know, the, the face cards being 11, 12, 13, 14, right? So we'll have like 14 points in there. Like, oh, one, two, three, four, four, da, 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 right? We'll have 14 points and it'll tell you while you're in there. Okay. And then the next question is while you're drawing cards, should a face card be what's determining whether or not you find the rogue in that region? Because imagine this, right? So you draw <laughs> Ace can Oh wait, that's right. We don't have a one. I was thinking Ace is gonna be one. Thank you so much. You're so right. So we'll have 13 locations, right? So here's what I'm imagining, right? You draw this card. It gives you the spades, which tells you, oh, I am in the northwest of the United States. You get a three, it tells you location three. And then Oh, fuck me. You know what it is? You know what it's gonna be? You can spend... Oh, hell yeah. So here's what's gonna happen, right? You you can... you Because I'm trying to figure out what happens as you draw these cards, right? Um, you can spend however many days... You can spend however many days you want in one place to try and find somebody. Because imagine this. I think you can also, like... Sorry, okay. So here, here's what else I'm thinking about, right? So you draw the card, it tells you region and location. You can, it'll say, hey, you can draw as many cards as you want to determine for each, 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 once you pick a region, each, each day you're there, each card you draw after that region is the, is the date, are the days you're there, right? And when you get a face card, a face and or an ace, right? So a jack, a king, a queen, or an ace, you, run into, you find your rogue. However, there's gotta be, there's gotta be, like, there's gotta be a good reason. Oh, yeah. 
you might get lucky, find your rogue, be able to eat and go, but the more, like, the more days that go by, the more days that go by, your hunger, days are going to be tied to hunger. So the question I'm asking myself right now is, if we assume that... Uh, you're you're put on put on a case you're put on a case you roll 2d6 to determine what rogue what rogue you are hunting oh man okay you wrote you roll 2d6 to determine what rogue what rogue you are hunting right um you draw a card, draw a card. Okay, so that that is a good, ooh, that is a, that is a good, more days equal more people noticing your crimes. That is a, that is the perfect thing to happen for when you're a rogue, right? So right now we're back up at the top, just determining like in general what happens, but no, that is perfect, Rouse. Yep, yep, yep. I'm keeping that. Thank you. Yeah. And here's the thing, right? It's going to be harder for you as a like rogue to move about. Like when you're, when you're an agent, there's few of you. Ooh, I like that. I'm working on planning my road trip monster hunting game where you draw cards for everything, but I think certain actions cause you to like discard cards permanently so you can't pull that card again like a battle of attrition. I like that. Callum, I can't wait to check that out. <laughs> All right. I can't wait to check that out. Um, you know what else might be kind of fun? You know what else might be kind? I, I think, I, not even I think, I know that I'm going to do this. Bringing people on just to talk about game design on here and maybe work on a thing with people. Um, like, I, some of my mutuals do that and stuff, and I would like to do that in, in the coming days at some point in the near future. Um, okay, you draw a card. The, the suit tells you which region, and the, and the, the value tells you where. Hmm. Okay. So. <laughs> yes, Callum, start working on it. Join me. Um, you draw a card. The suit tells you which region. The value tells you where in the region. Where in the region? In the region. Yes, chaotic, chaotic Discord call of game suggestions. Exactly. You can stay on a mission. You can stay on an assignment. Assignment for however long you want. Ever long you want. But your presence there. Mm. Okay, so we've got, like, if you are allowed to stay on an assignment for however long you want, there's got to be a negative to being there, right? My first, my first thought is you being there and on the trail is, like, more bodies start to show up. Ooh, what is this? That's what that is. Okay. Okay. Um... Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay, agent, you can stay on an assignment for however long you want, but your presence there causes the monster, ca causes the rogue to go on a spree. Mm, I don't think I... Oh, fuck. So I don't think I want them to get more powerful because each of whatever you're whatever you're going up against, 
Um, yeah, that is good. That is really fucking good. Hmm. So I don't want I don't want these guys to get stronger because they already have their like their their um ratings and I don't I I, I don't want to get too fiddly with things um at least not in this version I think I don't think them getting stronger is a bad idea but I don't think it's an idea that I can implement in a correct way <laughs> with the time that I have if I had actually gotten this idea in the first month oh man of like this project we could have totally totally put that in there immediately. Um, let's see. All right. This is a bad idea, Rouse. Jesus fucking Christ. I can't wait. I'm going to try this, this egg carton thing in the near future for these, for this fucking sound outside my window. Um, okay. Where were we? Fuck. I completely lost my place. Um, region. Okay, here we go. Um, you draw a card, you draw a card that's the suit tells you which region and the values tells you where in the region. You can stay as long as you want, but you were only given so much blood. So the longer you stay, you stay, the hungrier you get. <laughs> that is why exactly why your characters are like this. Okay. Here's a question. Do y'all think, <laughs> here's a question. Do y'all think, oh, actually, okay. So here's, here's, here, la, 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 la. here's what it's going to be. Aces will be one. So aces, so here, here's the thing, the, the hungry you get, right? Um, aces equal one when determining a region and location. Aces equal available, bl available, f f f fuck me, what's the word? Um, available feeder available feeding when on a mission went on went on went on a mission went on a case right because um in in the canon of this world right like there is most definitely like there are places you can go and get you know blood and stuff from right um but uh So, but we'll leave it up to like, you find an ace in your journeys doing this and it helps you and you're able to like stay here a few more days, right? So when you go on a mission, when you go on a thing, you have been given X amount of, you've been given X amount of blood for to stay on there and uh, like, you know, get it done or, you know, get fucked. Um, and so if you stay, you get a uh, stay, the hungrier you get. Um... You can stay past your hunger and risk becoming a rogue, a rogue while trying to find this rogue or call it quits. When you call it quits, draw one more card and the value of the card determines how many more victims after you 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 quit the hunt after you quit the hunt yes stick in the knife <laughs> okay so all right so right now you draw a card it determines um each card hmm 
Huh. Okay, so the amount of blood you're given is going to be 2d6, right? So you might get lucky and you might be able to spend like 12... Mm, Hmm. Let's go back to the thing real quick, right? So we have a, um, hold on, spreadsheet. So we have 11 sections here, right? It's not counting, cool. We have 11 sections here. And so if you start in the yellow, this is where they send you for. I think what they'd probably do is I'd say, hey, you have enough, they send you off with enough blood, which equals, oh wait, um, we talked about how much blood you get. So hold on a second. Uh, blood. Okay, so Okay, so right now we have I think the question we need to answer is how long how long does how long do you stay in the yellow? Like how many days can you like stay in the yellow, right? Are we saying that it's uh, like your your hunger goes down once a day. How many days can you go without eating? Let's make it simple. Yeah. Three weeks isn't going to work. So let's say for this, every three cards, you lose a hunger. So if every card is a day, every three cards, you lose a hunger. Or maybe it should be two cards. What are y'all thinking? Three cards or two cards? I'm going to say that vampires are different from humans and that they have to eat every X amount of days. Um, let's say, two, we'll, we'll just put two to every two to three days, you lose a hunger. Every two to three days, you lose a hunger section. So you you can stay there as long as <laughs> you can stay there as long as you're uh, you know as long as you can survive. But if you go back, hmm. oh okay, you go. So the rules that we have right now is like every two d six plus three days is when the government feeds you, right? Okay, here's what's gonna happen. Here's, here's what we're gonna do, right? Because the rule right now is every 2D6 plus three days, that's when the government feeds you. The government isn't gonna feed you multiple times on one assignment, right? So you roll 2D6 plus three days, that's when they feed you if you're still on the assignment, right? If you go back, if you go back, if you go back, it'll, um, if like, if you go back, they'll give you your one, your, they'll give you your one ration, right? And it'll bump you up because they're just feeding you one. Um, you're not going like straight back to HQ. You're like going to like, you know, some other hub or something and whatever reason, you know, we'll, 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 we'll get to the fluff of it, which explains why they're not feeding you better. Um, but so while on a mission, okay. Uh, 
<laughs> if I was a vampire, my appetite is already bad. I think there wouldn't be a soul left in Wales outside of my favorite person. <laughs> that is so fucking funny. Every two to three days, you lose a hunger. Every two to three days, you lose a hunger section. Um, government, government only feeds you once on a mission, on an assignment. Only feeds you once on assignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The government really said, you're doing this really important thing um, we can't do, so we're going to starve you. Like, sorry, what? Makes sense for them, though. It does, see, that's the worst part, right? It's like, this makes so much sense, but why are y'all like this? This is bad. Um. <laughs> okay, here's a question. Here is a question. Y'all know how you said, hey, maybe you should... Um, like the longer you the like the long the more the more time you last the you should get rewards for it do y'all think that the more people that that die throughout this there should be like penalties for the next game Potent like you can choose to have penalties right for playability like things get harder like that ooh man that i'm going to put this down for later notes for things to come back to right Where are these ideas? You must name every victim. <laughs> what? And give and give them a line of description. How many table? Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Uh, okay. Potential consequences. Quinces. For the next time you play. Depending on how many people you have let die. Um... I'm putting this all the way down at the bottom because this is not going in this first iteration, right? Because I am very much going to come back to this. Like, I want to put this in the jam. Um, I, I want to get this out. I want to get, like, the first iterations of it. And then I'm going to come back to it. Was on the way home from winning an award. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yo. Hmm. I mean, we could have some table generation. Okay. You know what? not diving into that at this moment. I will get distracted real quick. Okay. So. All right. So what we know, how you determine where you are. And then once you're done, once you're done, um, Oh my God, Callum, once you're done with that region, you can discard the deck. You can discard the deck. Or you can shuffle it back in there. It's up to you how you would like to play that. Oh, that's the jack. That's why it looks like that. That is a fun journal. Ooh. Ooh. What if part of the journaling, what if like, so you do get sent, so you do get sent there because of the, the, the person's initial victims, right? So there's probably like three of them. Um, yeah, after three victims, you get sent out, right? Because the first one, it could be a fluke, right? The second one, mm, the third one, ooh, we got a problem. Um, so I think when you roll to like get your rogue to be like, hey, kill these three people with these lines. Um, but yeah, optional journal challenge right about the last moments, <laughs> the last day of the person that was killed. Um, and what it must have felt like. Anyway. Anyway, okay, so we know that when you draw a card, it determines the region, it determines the specific location, and then you keep drawing, right? And if you get an ace, no, no, not an ace, it's not an ace, the ace has its own thing. If you get a face card, if you get a face card, 
outside of the jack because the jack is its own thing. <laughs> Welcome back, Caroline. Um, if you get a if you get a face card, you have found the rogue, and then you start to fight this fucker. Okay. If you get a face card, you have found the rogue and you start to fight this fucker. Okay. Um When you leave a When you leave an assignment, you get either one hunger raised or two hunger raised if you the hungrier you are, the harder the fight. <laughs> one hunger raised or two hunger if you dealt uh, with the if you dealt with the um, if you if you if if you successfully completed the mission, successfully completed the mission. When you leave an assignment, you get either one hunger raised or two hunger raised if you successfully completed the mission. As you return to your base of operations. Turn to your base of operations. Okay, now to figure out what happens when you're a rogue, right? What do the cards tell you for rogues, right? Okay, so here's what I'm thinking, the same thing. Yep, more food you need to live. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> um, so here's what I'm thinking. And, and also it can be like a, it can be, it can be a curse, right? Because if you have successfully defeated this rogue, you already ate this person. Like you, you, you can skip it or you can, you can skip it. You can skip that additional meal or you can take it in the unlikely event that, um, yeah, I, man, I can't wait to, I can't wait to start noodling on group play. Um, you can skip it or you can, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Oh man, captioning. Why are you like this? Hold on one second, y'all. I'm gonna refresh this. Also, I am gonna be here for another hour. So an extra 30 minutes. We're waiting as the yep, refreshes. Oh, I love it and I hate it at the same time. Even now. <laughs> Yep, this first one's a solo one, right? This like I want to get this done and I want to get it sent in, and then I I have some I have some like plans. I think I'm gonna. There's a couple of vampire ind vampire um individuals on TikTok that I really want to be like, hey, you want to play this? I know you like being a vampire. I, I see you being a vampire. Be f happy to see you play this. Um. So like it's gonna start off solo and then it'll become a solo friendly one, which I think will have a group play option and maybe even a two person, like with a G with or without a GM, uh, not a GM, a storyteller option, right? So I think Hunt, I think I think I know I'm gonna expand Hunt. I I have a fun little feeling about it. Um, okay, so if you successfully complete the mission as you return to your base of operations, now if you're a rogue, vampire, um. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Captioning. Uh, I wish I wish there was better like captioning options. You know, I wish there was uh, I wish the the software that we had available was so much better. Right. Because I 
I strive to be as inclusive and accessible as possible all the time. And this thing frustrates me so fucking much sometimes. Um, but okay, so here's what I'm thinking for the vampire, right? Here's what I'm thinking for the vampire. Um, it works the same way. You still draw a card and it tells you what region you're in. However, now just imagine, that, however, because like the vampire agent has one thing on their side. Yep. The vampire agent has, has this one thing on their side, right? They... They have government funding, at least for traveling and stuff. Yes, the government's being so fucking weird about feeding them, but like they can they can get to places quickly. Now, the rogue no longer has that and is literally being hunted, right? So you draw a card, 10 of diamonds that tells you region and location. If you draw a jack, if you draw a face card, you come up to a rogue. I uh, mean, an agent. you come to an agent and now you need to fight. Rogue works the same way. Draw a card. Sweet says location value. Sweet says region. <laughs> Their mystery mouse tool is government funding. <laughs> Draw. Draw a card, suite says region, value says location. If you draw a face card, you come up against an agent. I'm gonna have to make a table for agents too. Yep, I'm gonna have to make a agent for, table for agents. Look, look, look. If you draw a face card, you come up against an agent. Yes, you do. Um, okay. Okay, so when you're a rogue, I think you need to feed every day. Because if we're talking about this like a drug like a drug addiction or alcoholism, I think you need to feed every fucking day. And if you don't feed every fucking day, yo, okay y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Here here's here's what's, here's what's happening, right? Let's say, um, as a rogue, you need to feed every day. Um, every day you aren't able to feed. Every day you aren't able to feed. I like to, like, I, ooh, okay. So every day you aren't able to feed, it's like you're going into withdrawals and it's making you easier to catch. So every day you aren't able to feed. Mm. However, some of the rogues should be able to have ways to not hunt every day. Man, I kind of imagine that the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an extra chance to draw an agent, right? So if a face card, if a face card gets you an agent, every day you don't feed, it goes up, right? Um, every day you aren't able to feed, the chance of running into an agent increases. Face cards plus jack plus 10 etc so it's face cards and then it's a 10 so it's face cards and a 10 and a 9 so it's face cards 10 9 8 etc cetera, etc cetera. and the way you can and the way you feed um but yes however some of the rogues uh, uh so no no hunger or anger bar right you're just kind of um like once you're in this you're you're in where you were like it's just there that's you're kind of stuck in that place. Um, but I think what would blood withdrawal look like? Is it like the hunger bar again, but expedited? No, uh, I like the hunger and anger bar are up there for you as a vampire agent. Those things go away when you're a rogue. Like 
it doesn't it, like it does it doesn't fucking matter to you anymore at this point. Like you're you're solely in like a ha ah, kind of mode. Um, but yeah, it just looks like it just like it's more it's it's narrative. So it it's you're sluggish. You're um, more on edge. You're making mistakes. That kind of thing. Uh, and so there'll be like guidance for what that looks like as well for people to journal about it. Um, but on the note of some of the Grogues should be able to, should have ways to not hunt every day. I think that corpse drinkers. Not forever, but with some of them have to go out and kill, get a fresh victim every day, but some don't. Yeah, you know what? I imagine that, um, like I'm kind of imagining that maybe a corpse drinker doesn't have to do it every day because they'll drink blood and eat flesh, right? Um, so, okay, let's say half and half, right? Corpse drinkers, Corpse drinkers and artisans do not have to drink. Well, do not um, have to, f to do not have to find a victim every day. Uh, Corpse drinkers get four days. Artisans get three days. I think the corpse drinkers should get more because they like they're eating the they're drinking the blood and eating the body, right? So depending on how the game ends, you you, you might be getting a little bit lucky. Um, however, uh, should they be replaced by something as a rogue, desperation bar or something? Hmm. Yep, going hard with their meal prep. Should they be replaced by something as a rogue? Desperation bar or something? Hmm. Should there be a desperation bar? Hmm. Should there be a desperation bar? How would that, what would that, okay, if we put a desperation bar in this, what does that look like? What 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 happens on one end or the other? What does that look like on one end or the other? I don't know. I'm gonna have to think on that. Calm to paranoid. Calm to paranoid. And the way the desperation bar increases is Okay. Calm to, oh wait, what am I doing? I like that. Desperation increases with withdrawal and agent encounters.
every close call with an agent. Do, 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 do. Ooh, okay. With, withdrawal and increases withdrawal uh, agent encounters. Close encounters makes you more likely to get caught. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's sad because they just want to live for real. So as the days go on and the more futile it feels, the worse they get. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're more likely to get caught. Okay. Now, another thing we need to discuss is, so we, we, know, we know why an agent would stay in one place, right? Um, here is the thing. So two things we need to figure out before we call it quits tonight. One, how do you determine if you get a, if you find a victim from doing these cards? And two, why would a vampire stay in one place knowing that um fucking knowing that um you know being there an agent's going to show up. So, uh on the note of a vampire staying somewhere. Here's what I'm thinking, right? Because agents travel freely around the world because they have government money. However, rogues do not have that luxury and the su sunlight still hurts vampires, right? There are ways to mitigate that, but they're probably mostly expensive or they're tied to a specific job, right? So let's say a vampire was a construction worker. That company that owns the construction work would be able to, you know, rent out some type of charm that allows a vampire to work in the daylight. Um, or if you're rich enough, you can just commission it. If there's increased surveillance, they might be unable to get out. There's a lot of encounters with the money in it too. If there's increased surveillance, they might be unable to get out. Okay. 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 So I think one of the reasons that a, a, a rogue has to stay in one place long enough is to get enough victims to travel to another place, right? Because let's say, so let's say we go hearts. Actually, you know what? Let's right now, right fucking now, we're going to determine what part, um, what part of the world each suit means, right? Um, somebody tell me again the, uh, somebody tell me again how the United States is broken up. It's west south east midwest yeah could be a different reason for each type and also the general difficulty of traveling without government money um i think i think it is going to be the general difficulty of traveling without government money i think the could be a different reason for each type is an interesting concept for when it for when we come back to it um okay so Heart Club Spade Diamond. There are so many. Oh my God, Callum. <laughs> uh, let's see. Y'all, I was up at six o'clock this morning and I hate that for myself. I started donating plasma again and to try and get done as to try and like be there quickly. I went at the cr ass crack of dawn and it took me four fucking hours. Northeast. It took me four fucking hours because they were trying to get my stuff from another place that I donated in another part of the state I'm in that I hadn't been to in over a fucking year. And that place didn't open up till eight. And then they were having a hard time putting my shit in the system. I'm like, motherfuckers, why? On the upside, it will not take that long when I go back and donate on Wednesday, uh, south and then west. Okay, so we have what the cards mean. So if I draw... 
I draw a diamond, right? I'm in the West. Um, and then let's say I, okay, and then I draw a club. I'm in the Midwest. Ooh, that is actually pretty close to each other. If I go to the Midwest and then I get a spade, I'm in the South. Mm. Hold on a second. Let's pull up a map. United States broken into regions. Orange card. <laughs> A common way of referring to regions in the United States is grouping them into five regions according to their geographic position on the continent. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the images, all right? Oh, here we go. Wait. What is going on with this? Let's look at this one. Let's look at this one. Let's just let's just take a quick little peek. Okay, so what I'm thinking is the reason a rogue has to stay in a place for a certain amount of time is because it's difficult to travel. If you go to a region that's close, you have less time to try and get out because agents. Yeah, no one can decide to break up the U.S. I. Ugh. Okay. If you go to a region that's close, you have less time to try and get out because agents might communicate faster. Um. Okay. I think that isn't a bad idea. Here's another re here's another reason why I think, okay. So here's the reason why somebody needs to stay in a region, right? Dip All of them are touching each other. Ugh. I want I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. I think the reason they need to stay is because we're just gonna say while you're traveling and getting to a new place or heading to a new place, it is a lot more difficult. I've tried breaking up with the US, but they just can't take the hit. They called it a break, I called it a breakup, but they keep messaging me. <laughs> Okay, y'all, tell me if this is too much, right? Because what I'm thinking is... The thing that is popping into my brain immediately... They might be better at different times. But the thing that's popping into my brain immediately is like, okay, so we're going to have like... We're going to have a bunch of numbers, right, across this. Like, th we're going to have 13 different numbers in each region, right? What if... Oh, man. So the thing I think, the thing I think that has happened here is... Let's say we draw seven of diamonds. It takes us to the west, right? And we get in the seven puts you in LA. And then let's say the nine of spades. Let's say the nine of spades takes you to the south and it puts you in Florida. What if? Man, this feels like it's too much. What if there's a grid on here or something like that? What if, what if, okay, what if we have the sections bro broken out like this and the numbers, but there's also a grid? So you count the number of spaces between you and the place you have to go. And I don't know, somehow that tells you how. No. Yo, I know what it is. I know what the fuck it is. I know what the fuck it is. Oh my God. Okay. You draw, you draw the card, you draw the card, it tells you where to go. You roll your 2d6. You roll your 2d6. Fuck me, where are my 2d6? I don't actually need to roll them, but like my brain is saying roll them. 
You roll your 2d6, and you just got an you just got an 11, right? And 11 is how many, uh, and you need 11 victims. You need 11 victims. You need, you need to stop, you need to have, you need to stock up on to travel and you need 11 victims to get from one place to the other. Like we're just going to abstract out fucking geography, right? Because you might get lucky and Hey, 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 I know what it is. I know what it fuck. I know what it fucking is. Oh my God. I, I know what it is. Each of the numbers could also, I, I know, I know I'm going, I'm going back. I'm going back. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I know, I, I know, I know what's happening here. Fuck me, face card. Okay. If you are inside of a region, if you are traveling inside of a region, no, no worries. No worries. Never apologize. I take all of y'all's suggestions and put them in a put them in the notes section and come back and ruminate on them. If you are traveling inside of a region to if you are trap if you are traveling to different locations If you are traveling to different locations inside of the same region you only need, you only need three victims to do so. If you travel outside of a region to another region, you need 2d6 plus, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say, here's the thing, I'm gonna have to say 2d6 plus two because at the at the end of the day I always want this to cost more than traveling inside of a region. So if if you roll two ones that means you need four people, but if you roll two sixes you need 14. Plus 2. You need 2d you need 2d6 plus 2 victims to travel. If you travel without the needed blood food storage, food storage, increase your paranoia by X for every X. So y'all, I, so in the previous thing, parent, uh, we had 11 sections for hunger and anger. I think the rogue stuff is their sections are going to be longer or you could have it shorter. I, I think it's going to be longer than 11. I think the sections are going to be longer. Um, the next thing we have to answer is, uh, no rogues aren't common. I don't think so. I think like, Man, I actually, so funny thing, uh, for those of you that weren't here before, this is all happening in a, in a, like a fantasy, a modern fantasy world that I like had written about a little bit when I was in college and high school and had some graphic novel pages made up about it, et cetera, that I would really love to go back and start writing in. Um, and I had actually the Bureau, the, the Department of Magical Entities and Occurrences, or there was a UN version. And I had actually started like figuring out the population sizes for magical entities, including vampires. And so I think it's like not even like a full percentage of vampires become rogues. Um, I think rogues were a lot more common at the start of everything. Thanks, Callum. <laughs> um, I, I think I think there were a bunch of rogues at the start of this, but they've started to dwindle for one reason or another. And now the ones that remaining, maybe I don't know, maybe there's like. 50 of them across the United States. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think they're, I don't think, I think it's a small group. And of course anybody can become a rogue, right? But there's not this mass, like 
you know what? Fuck me. You know what it is? What population of the United States suffers from a plague infection? Ten percent. Yeah. Okay, so 10% of U.S. adults have drug use disorder at some point in their lives. 10%? 50 is 10% of what number? Yeah, yeah, I know math. 500? 500 feels really... Does 500 feel like a low number for a vampire population? Out of millions of people? I think 50 is the right number. I'm just going to have to... F <laughs> um, I think 50 is the right number of rogues at any given time. I'm just going to have to move the number. In America, maybe... Fifty rogues at any given time. Five hundred vampires in the U.S. Potentially. Um. Okay. What is the U.S. I, I gotta. What is the U.S. population? Five hundred. Five hundred is what percent of three three one nine. I just gotta know the numbers now. Oh my god! Do you know that? Do you know the, Do you know what five hundred is the percent of that number? Zero 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 point zero zero point zero 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 one five zero six four seven seven eight five percent. Like this is not this. Do you know how many far back of the zeros we're going here? Okay, but 500 is the is is the vampire pop would potentially be the vampire population. 50 is the number of like rogues in a given time. Here is the question: Is there more vampires or trans people? Right, because approximately one percent of the population is trans. Um, I you know what? I'm I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah, because 50, okay, because 10% of, 10% of adults have, have said they have, yeah. I'm going to make them 2% of the population. What is 2% of... Six million vampires? I don't think that's there, there. There's that many vampires. That's too much. I think at most there are like between 75, 750,000 vampires. Yeah, you know what? Yep, we'll go with 2% of the population. 2% of population are vampires. Let's... Oh. I'm going off of... I'm going off of the... I'm not using the... I'm using the United States population right now. If I go off the world population, it's going to be more than that. Yo. Yeah. Hey, let's, okay, you know what we're going to say? What is 10%?
Maybe this should be more of a world thing. And then we take the numbers from there. Okay. Yeah, actually. Da, I don't. I, n nope. Nope. This is stuff I can do later because I have one more thing I want to figure out how it happens because that is going to be super important. Six million. Um, okay. If two percent is six million, two, four, six, eight, seven, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty four. Let's say thir there are 32 million, let's say there are 32 million magical, it, magical entities in the world. What about that? 32 million magical entities in the world. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? You know what I'm saying right now? I'm, I'm just making a decision here. Magical population of the world is 100, 100 million. We're going with 100 million. We're going with 100 million, and then we'll figure out what the breakdown for it is later. Okay. Actually, I'm going to say 150 million. I'm going to leave it at that. Yep, 150 million. Yep, leaving that alone now. Okay, so the thing we have to figure out here is how do you find a victim? How do you find a victim? Hmm. It could be that there's not a lot of vampires and that most of them are clustered in a few communities in different places, both in the world and in the US, then they would have somewhat of a self-sustaining thing where they stop others from being rogue with the community and because it looks bad. It's, oh, and, and most of the time it doesn't get that far. And the community aspect of it plays into like the addiction part of stuff, right? Like, because becoming a rogue is, like I said, is a, is a thing about addiction. So you have this community that, yeah. Okay, let's go back up to the top. All right, y'all. I am going to dip out in 20 minutes. So between now and then, we need to figure out how do they get victims, right? Because, okay, we know how they encounter, we know how they encounter bad guys. I mean, we know how they encounter the agents. There's already rules in the system for how to fight agents, so I'm just going to port that over. The question here is, how do they find victims? Yeah. So there are vamps that kill, but most don't become full-flung rogues. I also kind of imagine that they're like, mm, I don't actually know about that. Um, um, okay. So we know that face cards, So that, yeah, there are vamps that kill, but most don't become full-flung rogues. Yep, yep, yep. So we know that face cards are how you like, face cards are how you run into agents, and then you have to fight them. Um, and we know that every, man, it can be the same idea as Asian encounters, but here's the, but what, what is it then? Like, is it even cards? Like every time you get an even card, you find a victim? Yes. Oh my God. Why am I scoffing at that? Yes, because there are more people for you to fucking eat than there are agents to come and fucking find you. Yes. That's what it is. 
that's what it is. So let's go through this real quick, right? Let's run through how this works. Um, how cards work, work. Okay. Heart. Heart. Okay, we're going to draw a card real quick. We're going to play through this real quick, right? Okay, so let me shuffle this deck. And okay, the way that the jacks, the way that the jacks were like a saving grace for rogues, they're also the saving grace for, uh, for the agents. They're saving grace for rogues as well. Um, I think jacks, I think when you get jacks, it gives you the opportunity to either have a friend come and rehab you. Well, mm, actually jacks are going to save you, but I'm not sure how yet. I'm not sure how yet. Okay, so let's draw a card. Three of hearts. So the heart is the northeast. We're going to say, let's say the three is New York City. You put you in New York City. And then here's what you're going to have to do, though. You have to draw your next region as well together. So then the next thing is a seven of diamonds, which puts you in the west, right? And then you roll your 2d6 plus two. Fuck me, six, six, ten, <laughs> six, eleven. I need to thirteen people. I need to. I need to eat thirteen people, right? All right, and then I start drawing. That's a nine. Nope. That's a five. Nope. That's an eight. That's one. That's a three. Mm. That's a jack. I have run into a I have run into an agent and now I have to fight about it. Ooh, and depending on the agent's rating, it can count as like a number of your fucking um it can count as depending on how strong the agent is, I'll I'll put them in there. It can count as extra count towards your body count. Yeah. Yeah, because ooh, yeah, that's how that works. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that works. Maybe. Also, it could be hard for rogues because they have to avoid easier sources of food, aka big cities, because those have a vamp population who want who won't want a rogue running around their city. Okay, so. Yes, failing to get your necessary meal slash agent. Yes, failing to get your necessary mail slash Asian encounter means a desperation point. So, assuming that I am a regular... Okay, wait, wait. Before I before I go further. Also, it could be hard for rogues because they have to avoid easier sources of food, aka big cities, because those have a high... Those have a vamp population who won't want a rogue running around their city. Excuse me. Uh, Caroline, I think that is an excellent idea for when we come back to revise the game, right? Because I think to know what... what I think that I think there's going to need to be a little bit more um, research and stuff done to say, OK, a little bit more deliberate planning on my end of like, OK, so this place has a high population, right? This place has a high population. Um, so it, 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 it makes the game harder. Um, but yes, yeah, so let's but so uh, failing to get your necessary meal size agent encounter equals desperation point. So, yes. Let's say that I am a, I'm either a bestial vampire, I'm a bestial vampire, or I'm a regular vampire. Um, I went one, two, three, I went, so two days. There were two days where I didn't get any food. So I do believe that is, that I'll have to go back and I'll have to go back, I'll have to reorganize these, these notes, but I do believe that means I've got two desperation points from that. And then I got, I got my eight, so I got fed. I didn't get more desperation points. But then I got my three, I got my three, and I got another desperation point. And then I got my jack, which means in this thing, following my rules, assuming I'm doing that correctly, I have four desperation points before I get to a fucking jack. 
Should feeding reset the desperation count? Should feeding reset the desperation count? Hmm. Okay. I think I think bringing it down by one is good. Maybe cities have both good and bad points. More vampires equal asylum for a night. Don't have to worry about meal for a day or two, but increased chance of age and encounter. Hmm. It's not a bad idea. Desperation. So I think if vampires are more tight knit rather than exclusionary, um, eating reduces the bar by one. Um, community. Okay, so I think that, okay, so of course vampires, vampires are once human. Um, they are not above uh, class struggles. So low, so like the non-rich vampires are very, very much more community based. So if you get in a city, if you get in a vamp, if you get in a city as a rogue that has a com that has a, a community based vampire stuff. So here's the thing. If you so first, if you get in a city that has a community, yes, maybe you can get some help, right? If you get into a city that has just rich elites, you're out of fucking luck. You're a shit out of luck. <laughs> um, and here's the thing. I think something that could be, I'd imagine so, but I don't think they'd want to help someone who's fully gone off the rails. Here's the thing though. I think that the communities, I think that I, like the reason there aren't more rogues is because like, is because most vampires are in either in some type of com either in some type of community or they have the money to engage in their roguish tendencies without raising attention to it, right? And so the community aspect is they get you help. They get you the help you need and they keep you accountable and they keep you safe and they make sure to help keep others safe while you're, you know, for the rest of however long you're living. Um, I don't know. Uh, so communities equals chance of rehab. I, I still want to leave, like, I still... I, I, so I want to leave the, I want to leave the chance of rehab up to you drawing a card or something or some, I, I, I don't want to, mm, because I definitely think there are more vampire communities than there are elites. And I still, and like the big part of this is the whole, like very little hope, right? There's a slip, there's a sliver of hope. Um, so I think it's. Yo, okay. Actually, hold on. Hold on. I, I think I know what I I think I know what I want here, right? Okay. So. No, 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 no. Okay, here we go. Okay. So. Here we go, right? When you encounter a
Rehab not forced. It could be a choice. Choice equal draw in a specific card. Okay. Um, here's what I think is going to happen, right? When you go to a city, when you go to when you go to a city that has a vampire community in it, as stated by the city notes, you can spend. You can get w one feeding from them. Roll 2d6 and draw a card. So there are rules. Um, hold on. Let's let's pull up the let's pull up the firelights real quick because I think I know how we resolve what's happening here. Um, so scrolling down, scrolling down, okay, so I can, I can, I can do whatever I want. I can make it as many pages as I fucking want it to be. <laughs> Okay, making an action. Actions guide uh, Actions guide your journey across, oh wait, man, I should have turned this on. Sorry y'all, one second. Okay, actions guide your journey across this world. Each one is a self-contained system which helps you resolve uh, questions you have or actions you wanna take. When making an action, go through the following. I love that. I honestly, I, I'm glad that um, the world building is just so interesting. I can't but go, what about this aspect of it? I'm glad you find that. Like that's, that is, that, I feel, that feels like such a high fucking compliment for me. Vampires being common in space communities, throwing every writer who uses vampires as metaphors grabs on thrown. <laughs> yes. I mean, I just mean, don't you have two weeks to type this up? I do have two weeks to type this up. Yes. Listen, I'm going to go ham on this and it's going to be fine. It's going to be super, super fucking fine. Um, I'm going to get it all typed up and actually laying it out isn't going to take me very long. Probably. We'll see. Um, but okay. Making an action. Uh, so, so this is how I think the, the, the community stuff resolves, right? If you go into a city that has a community, you can choose to go to them. You can choose to go to them and get some uh, and get some food. Um, and and again, this will be the vampire community. Where is this going to be at? I, I don't know if this is the main thing or if this is a if this is when we come back to it. But regardless of what it is, um, so you draw two cards face up from your story deck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so you draw two cards face up from your story deck. I just got a jack and a queen, right? Which is an 11 and a 12. Um, roll and sum your action dice. Six, three, six, and then to go and get this, you'd probably use like your, um, you'd use whatever feat is like your charismatic part feat. You'd use that bonus, right? And then to, to like interpret the ruling you do, if your score is higher than both cards, there's light, which means if you're, if, and it's not both cards combined, right? It's just both cards, right? These, so I got an 11 and a 12. So a, a six plus, let's say an eight is not going to do it, right? An eight is not higher than an 11 or 12. So if, if I had gotten um, a 12 or higher, if I had gotten a 12 or higher, you go in, you, if I had gotten a 12 or higher, you go in, they haven't heard of you, right? They haven't heard about a rogue like you that is like tearing through the place, right? They haven't heard about you. Mm -hmm. They haven't heard, they haven't heard about you and they were offer you a meal willingly and you're in good standings with them as of right now, right? Um, and then if your score is higher than one card, they're shade. So um, they will still feed you, but they're a little suspicious of you. So they're keeping a very close eye on you. And otherwise, there's darkness. <laughs> there's darkness. There's there's darkness because I failed both times, right? So what that darkness could look like is um, 
they'll still feed you, right? Like at the end of the day, you get fed regardless. They will fucking feed you, right? Because they like they help out those in need. They will get you fed. However, I think in this version of things, um, I don't know if these communities would go out of their, man, I think, I think, I actually think that, ooh, ooh, shade, they feed you, but you can't stay the night being turned away. Yeah, okay, because, because imagine if they let you in, they, they feed you and they give you sanctuary, and you have one, uh, you have one additional day, so like, if the next, so, here's what happens. If they feed you, let me write this down. Let me write this down. <laughs> let me write this down. Okay. And draw and draw two cards. Draw two cards. Light. They feed you and give you sanctuary. 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 If your next card is a uh, face card, discard it. Discard it. Discard it because you've been you've been you've been given sanctuary, you've been housed, and you and the and the agent has slightly fallen off your trail, right? So you get a little boost like that. Shade, they feed you, but you are not allowed to stay because they are suspicious. Darkness, they feed you, and they alert a local agent to your whereabouts. Um, he, okay, here's the thing though. You can't, okay, so you can feed it on the vampires. A, a rogue that is desperate enough could go feed another vampires, but it's very much anth antithetical and anth for a rogue feeding on other vampires is like, is like if it's, it's like going vegan, right? It's, it's, it's something they, it's not vegan, vegetarian. It's something they can do, but it's not something they particularly like. And it's not as fulfilling, right? So like, imagine if, um, like imagine, imagine if the paranoia bar is, has like little mini sections, right? So imagine the paranoia bar has 15 full sections, right? And then each full section has half of a section in it. Rogues feeding on a vampire would only remove a half of a section. But yes, rogues are still dangerous to uh, other vampires. However, in in like, are are dangerous to other lone vampires definitely. But here's the thing: one, community vampires like you have that whole community against you, unlikely to be able to overpower the whole thing. Somebody's gonna get hurt, but I don't think anybody's gonna die. Two, the aristocratic vampires, the ones that have all that money. I also like <laughs> they also have like some serious fucking like bodyguards, like magical protection, other vampires, werewolves, other types of magical creatures. So like rogues are dangerous in general to vampires, but they are deadly when they find vampires on their own. Um, but yeah. Okay, y'all. We, y'all, we got, we got a lot done. Holy fuck me. I think, like, we are in super good shape here. I think we've, I think we've, like, it's gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna go to the cover for the rest of this. I think that, yeah, rogues are dangerous to humans mostly, exactly. I, y'all, I think that we've gotten, um, shit. I think that we've gotten all of the major, like, mechanical things done. I feel like the danger of rogues for vamp communities would be like bringing age and attention to them, getting marked by agents as criminals, the chance of the rogues lashing out overnight. Yeah, actually, that's a really good point, actually. Let me, hold on. I think all of these are good points. So let me grab these real quick. No, I think that's a good, that's a good thing to consider in the expanded stuff, you know? These streams feel like a board of directors meeting, which is fun. I'm glad, I'm glad you like it. 
Um, but okay, y'all, we got we got to I think mechanically we're in a really good fucking place. Yeah. Yeah. I think mechanically we're in a really good fucking place. And I just need to go and like get all of my, I need to go and double check and make sure everything is cohesive and like all of the mechanics we said for the, for the start of this work together well and how it's going to look and type up the rest of these notes and clean them up. And then I think, um, yeah, I fucking think with like, after doing that, this is, this is ready for me to like type it up and format it correctly. I just don't think that the government would like that some vampires harbored a criminal they were chasing. Oh yeah, definitely. That's gonna, th I'm, I'm putting this in here because that's gonna have interesting comp, con, la, 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 that's gonna have interesting con, la, la. that is gonna have interesting consequences when we um, expand this game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they probably won't want to help. They probably want to help, but not sacrifice their thing for the whole community. Um, so I definitely think that just to wrap this up before before calling it quits with y'all, I definitely think that. Um, so the community aspect of this, like I, I don't know if it's going to be in the main one or not. I, it might be easy enough to like do it, but I feel like um, either way, I think. If it isn't the main one, it's going to be really simple. <laughs> if it isn't the main one, it's going to be really simple, and it's just going to have the light shade, da 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 da. Right. However, when it when it, if it if it's if it's in the main one, and it gets expanded, it's definitely going to be like a question of when did you decide to go and see these people? Because if you do it right when you get into town, like okay, first things first, like first things first. If you're in a region, mm -hmm, group play. If you're if you're like going from a small town to another if you're going from a town to in a, if you're going to places in the same region in the expanded play there's definitely going to be the chance that you've been heard about right like that could have happened um and then you automatically like and then you get some penalties for that right like they've heard rumors about it um but fuck me what was i trying oh, man i was going somewhere with that Yeah, they don't want to harbor anybody that like is a fugitive, right? But if you're if if you went from like the northwest, if you went from one region to the next, there's a there's a chance that they haven't heard about you. They haven't heard about it. Or they have heard about a ripper, but they don't have like details on you specifically. Because there are 50 rogues at any given time, right? So it could be anybody. And I think in the expanded play, there'll be more options to determine like did people get descriptions of you? Like how how sloppy were you? Oh, you know what? It'll probably be based on your paranoia bar, right? Because the more paranoid you are, the worse you're going to be. And so, hey, if your paranoia was this high, there is this, la, 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 this is how this, these mechanics work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like in the expanded play, they'll, it'll, it'll, get, it'll get a bit wilder. It'll get, yeah, there'll be more to do. Um, but on that note, folks. Mm-hmm, they might... They might think that you're a rogue, uh, just a vampire who needs help. Like, exactly. Um, but on that note, folks, are not a rogue yet. Um, on that note, folks, I'm going to dip out. I have some unfortunate chores to do. Um, but, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Rouse, that is a good. <sighs> yep. Yep. Um, oh, hey y'all. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna send this update like on Twitter and stuff. But my nine o'clock streams are gonna be moved thirty minutes back to nine thirty since I have started donating, and that means I just need the extra time in case it takes a little bit longer than I thought it would. Um, so this was a lot of fun. Thank y'all for being here and staying. But yes, uh, tomorrow not tomorrow. Um, thanks. I can't wait for y'all to play as well. Um, but on Wednesday, 9.30 a.m., I am playing two vampire games. <laughs> We're keeping up the vampire theme. Yes, we fucking are. Two solo vampire games. Uh, but yeah, I will see, hopefully see some of y'all there. Catch you later. Y'all have a great rest of your evening, day, whatever time it is for you. And uh, see you in a couple days. Au revoir.